So hi everybody, it's Matt here, your local friendly neighbourhood vestibular migraine sufferer. So as promised, uh, I'm going to do a series of videos about managing vestibular symptoms in kind of everyday experiences. So I mentioned that I would do one about going to the pub. The first one I'm going to do, uh, which is today's video, is about catching the train. So the train is something that we all have to do at certain points in time, of course, uh, but it is something where an environment where you might find obstacles or challenges to your vestibular symptoms. So I'm going to take you through a few tips. Some of them are going to be live from the station, live on the train, but just to kick things off for some initial tips before we get going. So the first thing, and I'm just going to click to it now. So uh, what you want to do, in my opinion, is book your seats. So make sure you're booked in so that you have seats to sit in. So you're not in any situation where you may be forced to stand up for the entire journey, which is quite common in the north of England. Might not be, you know, in London or in other parts of the world, but it's very common in the north of England because the railway service up here has been neglected for years. So make sure you book some tickets. As you can see, I've done that here on this booking thing I'm showing you now. Uh, and the other tip I would do before your journey when in this, in this booking stage is I would book yourself so you sat next to a window. So... The window means that you'll have access to natural light so you're not going to be reliant on the light electronic light in the train uh, which as we know triggers photophobia um, isn't very comfortable for for people with vestibular disorder of whatever nature so they they my initial tips about booking your journey sitting down making sure you've got a booking seat sitting next to a window uh, and I would say my final tip about your journey is if it is your first one, either with coping with vestibular, vestibular symptoms or with uh, when you're just in that recovery period, um, which is was the first time when I caught a train again, um, I would um, make sure your journey's fairly short. So in this vlog, I am going to demonstrate traveling from Sheffield to York, which is not that far. It's, if you get the faster train, it's about 40 minute journey. So not too bad. So I wouldn't recommend, you know, getting on the Trans-Siberian Express or anything like that. Uh, I would do a relatively short journey. So maybe from, you know, your nearest city to the next nearest city, whatever it may be, wherever you are, um, just to kick things off, just to test the water to see how it goes. So um, I'm going to click back now. So here I am. So I'm now going to take you forward into the actual journey, which is going to be um, littered, um, peppered, I should say, rather than littered with some coping tips. So I'm gonna take you now to Sheffield Station. So kind of my first major tip is to have sunglasses. So as you can see, I'm stood on the train concourse. At peak time is a very, very busy area, not so much at the moment, but at peak times it is. And you then have those waves of people coming towards you. It's got a very reflective floor and quite a light roof, as you can see. And those things are not very good for vestibular, suffer well, vestibular disorder sufferers. So, um, particularly, they stir up the uh, visual vertigo and the sensory overload that then create the derealization symptoms. So, first basic tip, get your sunglasses. Bring some sunglasses with you when you're going to go on a train journey. So, you've got the sunglasses for when you're in the concourse around people, say like today and then when you're actually on the train, because of course there is electric lighting on the train that you might want to shield from, and also there's quite a lot of movement within the train. The sunglasses remove that sensory overload, so you'll feel much more at ease being in a crowded area or on a train. Normal sunglasses suffice, I'm wearing my normal sunglasses today, because I've got my contact lenses in, but obviously if you've got FL41 lenses, they will also do the trick as well. So, first tip, Get your sunnies on. So one of my first major tips is to have something to drink with you if you're going to go on a train journey. So a bit of product placement there you can see. Um, the reason why I think having a drink is important because uh, when I first started with the vestibular episode at the football match all those years ago, one of the first things I noticed was that my throat went very dry and I couldn't swallow. So particularly in the months when I'd recovered, well, was get, getting towards being majorly recovered, one of the symptoms I did retain um, and notice quite a lot was kind of the dry mouth and dry throat, and that might also have been added to a little bit now by the meds, but um, so I used to find it really useful to have that drink.
drink there just in case you know you get that dry throat you feel like you can't swallow and sometimes that can cause you to panic so with us going on the train being on the train it's going to be quite a narrow um, area you're going to be in sort of quite a tight area sat down you might feel a bit dry and you might feel just a bit slightly off so having a drink some liquid with you is a really really crucial tip for any traveling on the train Finally, number four, I should say, final thing that you need, I think if you're making your first train journey, either with symptoms or after you've started to feel a lot better, make sure you bring a friend, because a friend's there in case you get into a bit of bother, and then also it's a good distraction having that conversation on the train. So I've got my main man, James, here with me. He's filming for me today. Say hello, James. Hello. And he's my, uh, my uh, travel buddy, which I think is a really good recommendation to take. So I'll see you in some of the next segments that are coming up. train door so another tip is to always sit near the door just in case it gets a bit too much for you you can slip off the train at the next station so i'm now on the train talking quite quietly so that people don't think i'm a weirdo on the train um, but i'm with my friend james so he can vouch for me that i'm not weird so another tip is to sit near the window so you've got plenty of light coming in natural lines so we know electronic lights bother us so sitting near the window here, if you're disturbed by moving, then obviously don't look out the window and look forward or shut your eyes or whatever. Um, so far the journey's been good. The other tip I mentioned at the start, James is here. He's been distracting me with conversation. Um, we've been talking actually about the Spice Girls, um, which um, is quite a change of conversation from what we normally talk about. So um, well on the way um, to my destination, which is York. So another bonus, another tip if you sat near a window, particularly on a smaller train like this one, is you can open the window and let some fresh air in. So I remembered when I was in the recovery stage, I used to like to have fresh air around me, probably because the whole vestibular episode started with a breathing issue. So it's another good tip to sit near a window and a window that you can open. Hi everybody, so I've, I've survived the train journey, so the, the, as I said, the tip one, having something to drink came in handy because it was all gone, product placement there, but so what? See, I'm in my destination, which is York Station, very beautiful station. I've slipped the sunglasses back on, lots of people coming in and out, and that can be a bit overwhelming. It really worked having my friend James with me to keep me distracted, so I didn't really think about any symptoms at all. Not that I've got any today, I haven't, but it, it takes your mind off it anyway. Um, and all was well, so I have completed my train journey. As I said, the drink and sunglasses were the main two crucial uh, pieces of kit we needed for your survival back. Hi everybody, you can see I'm now back at the station, back at my home city, um, completed the train journey so I went all the way up to York and now I'm back in my home city of Sheffield, um, it went perfectly fine, so I used the mitigations that I talked about during the video, the sunglasses, um, the earphones etc, uh, and I've alighted, I'm stood in the platform area, the concourse, and I feel absolutely fine, um, still got the sunglasses on because there's lots of people about and that swathes and waves of people can be a bit unsettling. So I um, hope you enjoyed the video. I hope some of these tips are useful. And if you do give some traveling on a train a try, why not let me know in the comments below. So thank you for um, listening and watching. Uh, and remember, as you were, you'll be again. See you soon.